This video is about bush pilots in northern Alaska and how they go about landing in remote areas. Over there, now, that's a Cessna 185, one of two planes on this trip. I'm riding in a popular bush plane called the Otter. It's a high-wing plane with a huge engine up front and a four-bladed propeller that, from what you can see of all the scratches and the dents, has seen a lot of action. There were about a dozen of us which were on this trip. We loaded the airplanes with all the supplies we'd need in the wilderness area. After doing some routine maintenance, our bush pilot gave us a safety briefing, and it wasn't your standard announcement we've heard so often on a scheduled airliner. For example, if we crashed, the pilot wanted us to turn on an emergency locator transmitter that was mounted on top of the airplane. Uh, it's just a little snaps, you rip that up, and if you look back here, see on top of that little antenna right there? Or actually below it. That's the emergency locator transmitter. It's going to be a three position little toggle switch, and they're on, off, and arm. Currently it's on arm. If we were to go down somewhere, get back there and turn it on to on instead of arm. And that way, it sends out a little signal. Now, if you happen to be in a really tight little canyon, you can just unsnap. It's got a little quick connect steels, and you would take it up on top of the hillside if you were able to. They, they can get the signal a lot better that way. But, I mean, we're talking a tight little canyon. Big canyon, don't worry about it. This door is the one you'd actually open. This is a simple little handle here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the front door's in a cockpit. Uh, levers right here. That opens these doors, one on the door on both sides. The seat belts for the pilot and the person in the co-pilot seat has a little lever on it and you just move that either way and though our shoulder harnesses and everything come loose so you can get us out. Um, no smoking, no complaining. <laughs> <laughs> this airplane, called the Otter, has a 600 horsepower air-cooled radial engine. It has a useful payload of over a ton and is normally configured to carry 9 to 10 passengers. It has a range of 1,000 miles, its cruising speed is 120 miles an hour, and its stalling speed is just under 60 miles an hour. This plane, the Otter, is great for hauling lots of gear and getting it in and out of remote areas. Today, we are flying from Fairbanks, Alaska, to the far northeastern tip of Alaska, near the headwaters of the Congregate River, which drains north into the Beaufort Sea. The river is on the so-called North Slope of Alaska. The river meanders through a valley and is braided by many gravel bars. Once we're on the ground and settled in, we will assemble some rafts and float down the river north toward the North Sea. Now, there are no airports up here, there's just nature. A bush pilot is skilled at landing in these remote areas. Now, our pilot is going to talk us through his thought process as he decides when to land. Okay, what you do on a strip like this, you got several problems. First off, you have a good size little hill right off the end. So coming this way, you've got to drop right off the end and then get down on the strip and get stopped, of course, before you run off the other end. Uh, coming the other direction, you don't have any obstacles. You can come in down real low, a few little bushes, but uh, with the Otter, you could actually even hit the bushes without any problem. Uh, other aircraft, 185s and stuff, you could do some prop damage if you hit the bushes, so you wouldn't want to hit the bushes of those. But uh, it's a lot better approach coming from the north, landing to the south. Uh, we've got a wind here that's... Uh, it was pretty much almost a direct crosswind 
but slightly favoring landing to the north. Uh, so if I landed to the south as we did, we had a touch of a tailwind to land with. But uh, if you figure in your, your loss of, or your addition of speed that you had extra, uh, the benefit or the uh, deterrence of that versus the deterrence of coming in over a hill and then trying to land, getting a high sink rate. And uh, what you got to be really careful, which they've tore up several airplanes, is you come in, get a high sink rate, and hit a downdraft, and then you hit the, hit the ground too hard and uh, you'll break your gears off. So, uh, with the way the wind was, and uh, you know, it wasn't enough to make any difference, so we, I chose to land with a little bit of the tailwind. And uh, other than that, what you want to do, you, uh, when you come in and land on a strip like this, your men, men, mental uh, thinking process on it is you're not coming in to land. You're coming in to roll it, see how it feels. If you actually touch down right on in, right where you wanted to, and everything's good, then you make the decision that you're actually going to land. That way you don't have a mental block saying, I got to land, I got to get on the ground. It's all you decide to land after everything went perfect. And also see what the options were. If you land a little fast, you run off the end, you don't want to have a catastrophe if you misjudge it or your ability wasn't quite as good as it should have been. You want to be able to run off into something that's more than what you would normally choose to land on, but you want it to be very survivable for the aircraft. You know, once you start coming down to touch it very long at all with that aircraft, you don't have the power to go around. With the Otter, I've got so many extra horsepower, you know, I could stay on this trip a long time and, oh, I needed to use about 600, 650 foot. Uh, you've got just if you made the turn, you got 900 feet. So you used about two thirds. Yeah. So, but uh, and you keep going around, and you make well. What I did, I plugged in my, G, I had my GPS on it, and uh, I felt how much winds I had and how slow I was able to get my actual ground speed, because that's what concerns you when you're trying to stop in 600 or 800 feet. You know, 10 knots is a lot of ground speed to try to get off when you're loaded. Uh, and so I felt the ground speed going both directions and you just take your time and you make sure you're comfortable with it and you know, always have another option in case the winds are too bad here that you can go to a real good place and not be pressured otherwise you end up being an aircraft. It's a good strip. It, the winds is what can be a real problem, yeah. especially in the afternoon when you've got a lot of the hot thermals and stuff going. <laughs> they make the air unstable. A nice thing, the breeze we do have here, it's not an unstable breeze. Yeah. So that's a, that's a big plus. It's not unstableness. And you can't get right down to your slow speeds because you've got to have a little extra speed to deal with the downdrafts. Uh -huh. and stuff. Uh -huh. so. Shorter than this. <laughs> well... Tell me. Pretty amazing. Tell me what it felt like. Uh, well, um, I'm really surprised I didn't throw up. <laughs> I'm really happy I didn't throw up. It was your life. After we'd set up our camp, we went out for the first of our many hikes, learning about the local ecosystem. There are other interesting videos on my Alaskan trips. To find them, enter Franklin Clay Films Alaska in the YouTube search box.